Hey guys, welcome to another lesson of Pro Teachers Noob. Today I have with me Dan. Hey. And today we're going to be going over Mark Guggenheim's entire Blade run, all 12 issues. And let me ask, what's your experience with Blade? And I'm just going to guess before you answer the movie. Yeah. Is that it? Or do you remember him in the 90s Spider Man cartoon? I do remember him in the '90s Spider-Man cartoon, but like most of my most of my impression of him came from like you know the Wesley Snipes movies yep. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. And well, in this case, Guggenheim. This is actually the longest. Twelve issues is still the longest lasting Blade run. That's just what. Yeah, like. But, give him um, a longer series. Come on. Sales, but look at this opening issue. Look at that cover. That is awesome. Actually, the it's not the same. It's not the same artist, but um. And I I'll, before we get started, people, I already showed him the artwork. It's ugh. it's pretty rough. Yeah, but that's why you got to read the issues because you know. Right. But you got to yeah, break it open to see if the art on the inside is as good as the art on the outside. Yep, but it's, it's a cover that would get your attention at least, right? It is, yeah. That's that's nice looking. And we open up with Peter's already um, turned into a vampire. I don't know, Parker. Your wife not, but it might not approve of your this new look of yours. <laughs> and yeah, they fight him out until he knocks him down, um, even and shoots him in the kneecaps, even. And then we see Dracula. And yeah, that is actually Dracula. Who's yeah. been out now? In Marvel, Dracula has died and come back many times, as one does. Yep, but in this case, yeah, he takes him out pretty quickly, utilizing a stake in his boot. Um, and but then when he goes there, he then finds a bunch of kids who turn into vampires. And that bottom, oh, yikes! Yeah. That kid looks ugly. Yeah. Let the teacher go. <sighs> And unfortunately, since there's no redeeming them, he has to kill them all. And then we, but then we jump back to this is going. To, this this run's going to have two stories. We're always going to have flashbacks. In this case, when he was born, as we're introduced to Deacon Frost. You remember him from the first movie, right? Yeah. And we basically find out that here, this is what's been the um, how it's worked. After he was right when after he's born, but while the umbilical cord was still connected, his mother got bitten. bitten. Hence, why it um, passed over. Boy, that is one creepy-looking baby, isn't it? Yeah. Again, rough. Rough. But then we find out with Spider-Man, it's like uh, let him sleep him, him off, and he sleep it off. Maybe get his kneecap caps back and effects. But isn't he, um, Spider-Man's got radioactive in blood. U.S. Weekly did a piece. It'll kill the enzymes responsible for his conversion. So that's clever. There's obviously no way in hell they were going to keep him that way. But I think that makes that weird but interesting that Spidey will never permanently stay a vampire. Mm. I mean, that does make sense, right? Yeah, I mean, like, if he's got radioactive blood, it would just, it would kill anything. Eventually, like just not right away. Yeah. But eventually, oh, notice this, though. Something's not right. I mean, okay, not saying Dracula is one thing. But what about these guys? What does that tell you? We're in Fallout? No, no. Okay. Notice the reflections. He's talking to Blade. We're seeing Dracula. I don't think he's talking to nobody. Dracula's not there. Makes sense. Why are these two guys not there? Uh, what unit are those assault troopers with? We then see a little understand. bit more with um, um, Blade as he's growing up, as we see stuff with his mother. Like, uh, it was, yeah, with his mother, an adoptive mother. She's basically been taking some of her own blood to feed to him. To keep her son innocent for as long as she can. But yeah, it turns out a whole shield carrier has been infected. But Blake gets up there, takes them, you know, fights them, takes them all out, and brings the whole thing down. As we then see when um, Blade, at one point, when he was younger, 
meets up with a young guy um, who I forget. I don't. don't and that's not Whistler. I think that's supposed to be someone else, but someone who's supposed to be one of the guys who trained him. Mm. How many of us did you expect, Daywalker? Five, ten? You weren't expecting a helicarry for all of us, were you? Actually, I was. Vampire has no soul and have no soul. And those who have no soul cast no reflection. That's how he figured it out, of course. And But with them, since they're not daywalkers, you blow up the helicarrier, the sunlight takes them all out. Oh, but then we're meeting up with a um, Lucas Cross. Um, as he's to- showing about um, Blade, this isn't necessary. I doubt there's anything in these fi- files that could tell me something I don't already know about my own son. Splinter Group. Ha, cute. Hmm. So, I guess, Dave, writing-wise, there's some good stuff in here, wouldn't you say? Yeah. It's just the artwork that just doesn't help it. The artwork is a bit off-putting. Yep, the covers are amazing. Victor Von Doom. Yep. Does that sound like a name you want to be messing with? Nope. (laughs) Nope. But basically, he's been told about, uh, and his father's been told about this prophecy. A father in in chains, freed by a son not yet birthed, will unlock Vlad's remains upon the salted earth. Like, a son not yet birthed, for example, is clearly a mistake because that would make him a fetus. A fetus is incapable of doing anything other than driving right-wingers into a frenzy. <laughs> yeah, but here we can tell where Mark um, sits on his politics. Mm-hmm. Uh, then again, given how he's written stuff with um, in the Arrowverse, yeah, not surprising. No, there isn't any mistake. The prophecy is correct, and we'll find that out soon. That very, uh, as we see, uh, Blade is fighting his way through. Um, I see what she saw, as if, if through my own very eyes. And what she saw, Mr. Brooks, quite clearly, and leaving no room for interpretation or uh, misconception, was you. I've never been to that very until tonight, pal. Basically, this is a flashback. It's, um, his, this is from Blade's own, uh, Doom's own mother saw this. Hmm. Uh, but something tells me all black people pretty, pretty much look the same to you. Doom's memory is not to be questioned any more than is his will. You are the man my mother saw wearing the same modern clothes, carrying the same modern weapon, even the fresh cut on your face. I'm called Blade. I hunt my own kind. And tonight, the circus is in town, as he's dealing with a bunch of vampire clowns. <laughs> and those are my favorite shades, you bl- and blood-sucking mother. Ooh. Uh, ma- my master, it is as he ha- it is it has happened. He is cut exactly as described. So in other words, this Doombot was following him. This whole time. And basically now they were ready for him. So they bring him they bring him all four you know, bring him there. Of course he fights them, obviously. And heads over there, fights his way through until he meets up with Doom. Oh, believe me, I've got worse things than that plan for you, buddy. Don't delude yourself. Thinking that Doom is one to be struck down with a splinter of wood or a silver bauble. I knew you would not merely accept my invitation. My Doombots were tasked with giving you the appropriate motivation to make the trip. Mission accomplished! For all! Sacrobos. You've, you, you're, you've enough vampire in you to be susceptible to the simplest of holding spells. Because then he basically, um, we then cut, I love how they use this actually with the dark, you know, the tinting of the cut lighting showed a time passed. Hmm. Let me get this straight. I, I have, let me see if I have this right. I'm going to travel back in time to save your mama who is pregnant with you from vampires. Oh, yeah. I'd say Reed Richards pretty much has it right. You're nuttier than a Snickers bar. <laughs> hardly. And, 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 and hardly an, intel, an, an intellect such as mine makes time travel a simple matter, as you will now experience. You must not, and be aware of my Roma heritage and experience in the expertise in the black arts. That and your halitosis. Just as <laughs> I'm aware of your addiction to human blood, a burden I will relieve you of in exchange for saving my mother. 
How about I relieve myself all and over your ugly metallic carcass? You misunderstand. You're not going to do this. You already have. As I said, fate has left you no choice. Neither has Doom. Bravo on Doom here, right? And yeah, he basically fights his way through. Everything happens. And then he finds this and this man, a political pr- um, prisoner of um, tr- who helps him out. That's his father. Mm. A father rescued from a son not yet bored. So he helps him find his way up to where Cynthia Von Doom is. As she's um, like, what kept you? Don't look so surprised, Damfer. What good is a gypsy who cannot foretell the future? So change of plans. Kill the vamp, then kill the mom. Because he wants to kill her to prevent doom from being. Or not. This might change my uh, this change of plan might need a change of plans. There's too many of them for you or I to handle, Damper. Alone, Damper. I'm listening. Damn it. I have foreseen your intentions towards me. But you must know by now, either both of us leave this place alive, or neither of us do. Fine. Damn it. Do not regret your decision, Damper. You made the right choice. Too much would change otherwise. All the right stuff would change if you ask me. Besides, how would you know? Need I remind you what good is a gypsy if she can't foretell the future? Yeah, I know. But, lady, that future sure ain't pre- pretty. The future never is. I should have known. I should have known he man- he somehow managed to escape. Blame me if you want. His get-out-of-jail-free cards just one of the many unsavory deals I made in the past 24 hours. You'll come to regret your agreement. Lady, I'm already there. I don't mean the bargain you struck was me. Prison changed Lucas Cross. Changed him in ways you can only imagine. I'm going to slice open that armor of yours like a tin can. Do so and you won't get this. The elixir, I promise. Doom is a man who keeps to his bargains. I didn't make any bargains. Then kill me or try to. We both know any such attempt will meet with the same end as before. Take the potion. Lose your thirst for blood and your bloodlust for vampires. Say that last part again. The aspect of you which are vampiric cannot be separated from your will to hunt the same. It's your choice. In other words, cure himself of the bloodlust, but he won't want to hunt vampires as much anymore. So eventually um, makes his way, like, brought anything and back anything to declare? Nope. Not a damn thing. And, and that, see, again, the writing works. It's the artwork that's rough, as we've said already. Yeah. We're keep saying that, but that was good writing, wasn't it? It was. It was. Um, we see, yeah, we see him on, on a date, especially a blind date, and um, oh, he was, I love how he says, "Like I'm in pest control." And it turns out, though, she's a vampire. Back to my place? What I've got in mind, we can do right here. You know, when I asked you out for a bite, this isn't exactly what I had in mind. My bad. This is probably something I should have mentioned in my profile. I'm immune to vampire bites. (sighs) I'm not like those guys you've been trolling for online. Sorry, baby. Doesn't mean I can't still show you one hell of a good time. Unfortunately, then, we're seeing, um, as one guy witnessed it, and it basically makes it seem like he murdered her. Guess this means no second date, huh? So he's going to get arrested. Mm. Oh, but yeah, this is where we see him then talking with this um one and the one guy who's going to be teaching him. Um, his name's Eric, and he's basically teaching about like um concentrate, obsess the details. This one, this one, what? This one is the fake. Very good. What's the guy do with killing with killing vampires? As I have. What's this have to do with killing vampires? Ours is a time-consuming calling. His name is Eric, sorry, because that was his first name. Eric, training, yeah. patrolling, hunting. More training, and yes, more training. Always training, so, and such per, and pursuits leave little else for anything else. So when you are older, how will you make a living? How will you feed yourself, clothe yourself? How will you afford the tools of your crusade? You will support yourself off the wealth of your quarry. Vampiric society, most of it is very well off, but they'll have no need for such wealth after you send them back to hell. Uh, that's why it's important to know how to tell the real valuables from the fake. 
Yes, by always obsessing the details. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is when he gets gunned by, and brought in by a bunch of SWATs, and he's not going to kill him. Look, he's got enough iron here to invade North Korea. That's nothing. Check this out. Of course, no one's going to believe him about um, him being a vampire. You know, or, or hunting vampires, because of course they've kept it so quiet. Damn, that hurts. Kind of like this does, I bet. And how much do you think this hurts, buddy? And so they're basically trying to talk to him. They're showing us off and bringing up about, you know, again, they think it's a fact, you know, like, and where she was killed. Um, he then, and basically tries to say how she's a vampire and I'm a vampire hunter. I stick her to the heart and she turned to dust. That's why you can't find a body and never will. Okay, okay, if that's how you want to play it, that's cool. That's not how I'd go. Well, we're the ones who's going to have to do the, t and that's the ones who are going to have to do the time. Then she comes in through um, this lawyer. As we then see um, you know, Blade back in the past dealing with his, one of his first vampires and takes him down. Uh, he thinks it was a vampire. And he stabs him, but unfortunately, murderer, murderer, you killed my husband. He wasn't a vampire. And then while they're explaining it all, he then thought about, like, a homeless guy. Yeah, why? Obsessed the details. Excuse me? Give me a second. Across the street. Across the app from the alley where Rene was killed. There's an ATM machine. Are you serious? I've got a good memory. Now, those machines have security cameras, right? It would have been pointing straight at the alley. Get that tape. Checked with the coroner. Man suffered from perf Peripheria. It's a rare disease affecting hemoglobin blood. It explains why this man would appear at first glance to be a vampire. But the woman, his wife, she describes you to the police. It's just a matter of time before they find you. You must leave tonight. They should arrest me. I should go to jail. What? I said I should. Be I belong in jail. My first lesson, the first thing you taught me was how to spot them. And you taught me, you always said, obsess the details. Obsess the details. And because I didn't, a man is dead. Yes, he is. And you've learned another lesson. But you will learn nothing from prison. You will only deprive yourself of years. And worse, you will deprive the world of a vampire hunter. So, yeah, they looked it up and they see nothing in there. So, as far as they think, oh, they can't, you know, like, you know I mean, it's, it's, oh, I love this. The whole tape's like this. You got 10 free hours, you should, and you should watch it. It drags a little in the middle. But around 3 a.m., a guy takes out 50 bucks, and it's a real showstopper. But bottom line, no one went into the alley, much less killed anybody there. So what? So your client didn't do her in the alley. He did her someplace else. So now you're contradicting your own witness. And I probably don't have to remind you of this, because I will. And, and but I will, because it's just too fun. You don't have a body. No body, no crime, no charges. My client would like to be released now. Not so fast. Your client's not going anywhere. Good news is... They have to kick, and they have, uh, the good news is they have to kick the murder charge against you. Bad news, your fingerprints put up a red flag. They match a string of robberies all across the country. Valuables taken, only the good stuff. You want to support them? So yeah, he took all that stuff. This is one of the items stolen. Look familiar? Coincidentally or not, after the robberies, each of the homeowners disappeared. Never to be seen or heard from again. Hello, you paying attention? So what happens now? He's being transferred over. And um, I love it. Hey, buddy, you got anything to eat? Because I'm starved. Holy furp! Screw, screw, the, and screw, there's a furping vampire here. Shut the furp up, you stupid. God almighty. Thanks, boss. And he basically gets his way out of there. And, um... So, yeah, so he makes his way out of there, and he does it around the time when he also leaves his family, because he has to for what he did. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of that writing? That was really good, yeah. You kind of ignore the artwork as it goes on, don't you? Yeah, you kind of just get used to it. Yeah. Oh, this one's a sad one. The, and and th this is it? Yes, Mr. Cross. The complete translation. Uh, a father in chains, freed by a son not yet birthed, while unlocked Vlad remains upon the salted earth. After his vampire urge is sated, upon drinking of vir virgin essence, his resistance now abated upon learning of father's presence. 
returning essence lost from those undead in graves at immortals living cost to the man known as Blade. Mm. That's a that's a good that's an interesting prophecy. But yeah, we see him then head over to um he's in Pennsylvania. He's um basically in this one place where the, you know the shopping mall area where there's a mall Santa. Mm -hmm. um, this week on America's most notorious, he was one and one and one of America's greatest heroes. But now he's on the other side of the law. Who is Luke Cage, and what drove him to defy the law of the land? And finally, learn about the mysterious home invader, who police believe may be responsible for several missing persons cases. This week on America's most notorious. On the other hand, maybe it's time to be moving on. But then, as we're seeing all this, um, hey Santa, got a minute? Um, mind if I have a word with you outside? That's and that's not the kind of request I typically take, friend. But I'll put the and uh, but I'll put the elves on it. See what they come up with. Cute, but I wasn't asking. In any case, I wasn't all that nice this year. Are you are you threatening me? I'm not threatening you yet. But suffice to say, it's really in your best interest to step outside. I'm not going anywhere. So that's how it's going to be. Fun. Oh my God, Dan! What's he doing with Dan? And I've had to be moving along anyway. I, you're making a rather large mistake, my friend. Yeah, I tend to do that. Jumps around. The glowing eyes tell me I'm dealing with an with Animus, a, a level nine demon. I've heard about him, but we somehow managed not to cross each other's path. Animus is a soul jumper. No, and no body, but he could take control of others by transferring his soul there. Now, who the hell are you, and how many different ways can I think of to kill you? I was right. This is going to cause one hell of a mess. We then see um, back again, another flashback, and he's coming up to meet with someone else who can train him. I'm not a kid. Of course not. No way just a kid knows the rules of the Order of Tyranna. I'm Cyrus Cutter. This here's glory. Sit. I wasn't asking, boy. When the leader of the Blood Shadows gives you an order, you listen to it. So, yeah, basically he's going to be fighting with it. Jumps over to the little girl. Oh. All right, quiet, huh? I said you're quiet. Sorry, wasn't a complaint. He's not so bad. How'd you know I was thinking about Cutter? You a mind reader? I've, you've seen strangers in these past few months, haven't you? Hanging with Cutter? What, and what I've seen is him and taking a beating to you. On Christmas. He's not so bad. Yeah, you said that. You should get far yourself as far away from here as you can. You're sweet, but you're a kid, and you're too young to know there's no one earth so far in a way that Cutter couldn't find me. He has friends, and I don't mean the blood shadows. You mean the order? You're here under their protection. You know what they can do. Actually, I don't. But trust me, the order's resources, Cutter can do whatever he wants, including with you. Ooh. Oh, boy. So, yeah, dealing with that kid, like, this one will take a moment. And then he then shoots the guy just to prove, like, it's all in the timing. To jump in the split second before the hammer pulls back and the bullet's flying out. Pity that. Now, where were we? We're then seeing him um, dealing with the one guy and, and, and battling him and fighting him, killing him. However, the years have passed, and I think he takes over. Dan, what the hell are you doing? Don't. Don't call me Dan. Everyone, all of you, get out of here. You too, lady. But that's my husband. It's not your husband. Go. Tell me, Danfer, do you know what it feels like to claw your own eyes out? Once you get past the bane, pain, ugh, the sensation is rather interesting. It won't end. He keeps jumping souls, torturing people, killing them. Because killing him means killing his host, an innocent man, a husband. Maybe even a father. It won't end. It's Morton's fork. He would have killed you, you know. He would and would have. And he would have killed me. And there was no place to go. Come on, talk. I should have found another way. There wasn't one. Maybe because I hadn't didn't look hard enough. There wasn't one. The whole thing uh, situation was a Morton's fork. What the hell's that? When you only have two choices and both of them suck. You're right about that. So unfortunately. No more shoppers for you to possess. Jump this. Dan, I'm sorry there wasn't another way. I really am. Merry Christmas, my ass. Sad, isn't it? Mm. 
He had no choice. Yeah. Um, next one, Wolverine got stars, and this ties into during um, Guggenheim's Wolverine one run, which happened during Civil War. Oh, now that's a great cover, isn't it? That's awesome. <laughs> Basically, it, and this is a retelling of a moment from that run. In that case, you had Roberto Ramos doing the artwork. Yeah, Ramos did it better. Basically, they yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I could show you that in, in a future episode, but yeah, this one. Yeah, but yeah, I love how he's like, yeah, that's a mistake most people make. What's that? To think just because my claws are the result of my genetic mutation that they're a superpower as he slices his way through those gloves. He then gets out of there and then they decide to, um, oh, we're having him deal with um, Morbius. The jerk's in the name is Morbius. They call him a living vampire, whatever that means. He and I have thrown down a few times before. Last time, the old, the little burp took a bite out of me. Some people think it altered me somehow. Basically, it was believed he's the one who turned him into a vampire. He didn't. It did give me one hell of a mat on, though. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I read about Morbius ra raising all kinds of hell in Long Beach, well, I decided to take a little trip. The thing about a Vendetta is you got to be able to enjoy it. And as much as I've been enjoying this one, something's off. What's the matter? Some reason you're not bringing your A-game? Not that I'm complaining, of course. I've been looking forward to this, so I'd like to savor it, but what you and what you got there, buddy? You'll see. I might not have brought my A game, but I did bring along a few friends. Superhuman Registration Act. I registered. Welcome to the new order, world order, buddy. I've got bad news for you guys. I'm not superhuman and I'm not a superhero. So go goose step over somewhere at somebody else. And then he's um he's sedated. Meets and then we get another flashback. Um, focus, Hector. Who or what put this beating on you? A vampire? No, it sounds crazy. Some people think it's a vampire. I've heard those rumors too, Gloria. And and you saw him back in Hector, guy in this cowboy hat. Tried to roll him, you know, lift his wallet. So in other words, he's been in charge of this underground group gang. That's what he took over. But yeah, then we see Maria Hill is hiring him then to deal with Wolverine. And they'll clear his name of all of his stuff that's been going on. And just tell me, and tell me just about, and just how easy have things been for you these past few months? I think being on the run from the law would have cramped your style a bit. Bring Wolverine, Wolverine in, dead or alive, I don't very care, much care. And you've got carte blanche to take as many vamps as your little heart desire. Plus, I'll even give you access to Shield's resources. Is there some piece of paper you want me to sign? <laughs> Anything to make it easier. Ooh, that's a weird looking vampire. He looks like a rat, doesn't he? <laughs> hey, bub, you lost? Uh, buddy, I just got back from 15 rounds with Omega Red. I'm tired, I'm pissed, and all I care about in this world is getting my hands on a brew. My point is this. You want to pick a fight with me? That's fine. But I'm getting myself a beer first. Change of plan. She wants to have a word with you. And they sent you to bring me in, right? And, and Edge, right? Blade. That, registra that registration act, burp, seems like. And they figured you for their best shot, seems like. Can see where you got your handle from. Nice blade. But I got it outnumbered by five. Don't worry. I'm called Blade because I only need one. All right. You sure about that? Pretty sure. Ouchie. Tell me something. Do you have a healing factor? Ooh. Please struggle. Uh, the vampire. Guy in a cowboy hat. He had this... Oh, they mistook... Oh, you'll see it. The two of them, uh, he fights, he shoots them. Um, they put up a good fight at everything. And at one point, he, and this here is a vile vampire blood. Even when it enters a person's bloodstream, the, vamp the vampire enzymes turn him. Something tells me your healing factor won't keep you from vamping out. Then all I need is one good steak. Then uh, you ask me, that's game, set, and match, Bob. Go ahead, do your worst. What's the matter? Lost your nerve? No, I just re remember something. Let me go and this is over. She won't be bothering you anymore. I'll make sure of it. You think I'm just going to let you walk out of here? Yeah, because... Because you know we're too evenly matched, and you have better things to do with your time. Sorry about the misunderstanding. Excuse me? 
What did you just say? Wolverine's off limit. Where do you get off? He's off limits. You want me to take marching orders? That's fine. So long as you let me keep doing what I do, we won't have a problem. But unless Wolverine kills somebody he's not supposed to, you back off. Uh, 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 or, you'll, or, or you'll answer to me. And what the hell did he say to you? Nothing. I just realized I owe him one. Turns out, like those vampires, I heard they move fast. But this one's nothing human moves this that fast. Steak. Whoosh, steady. Cold. It, that's, and it's the blood loss. You lost at least a pint or two. Take my coat. Thanks. No problem, bub. You owe me one. Again, good writing, right? I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm, it's good yeah. writing. I mean, I, you kind of saw this coming the moment you heard about a cowboy hat, right? Yeah, I guess. And now we reach the halfway point. So what have you been seeing about this so far? This one's, like, aside from the art, it's pretty good. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we see um, back then in Liberia, Lucas, Lucas. The middle of the night, Oleg. It's the Baron. He just signed the warrant. His men are coming for you. How soon? So basically, we're starting to get a bit more about his history now. As um, any problems taking him into custody? No. Shield's keeping tabs on him these days. And as you know, we've got people in that organization. We took him while he was asleep. No problems. Excellent. I wouldn't want any undone harm to befall my son. And we that find hand that though, it, like back in the back. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we find out this is, I said, far earlier. At mm. Rosario, the Baron's horses. We've got to go faster. Oleg, get, to ta get Tara to the train. I'll draw them out. As we see, there's Blade's mother. And he's basically telling him, like, once you're in London, go to Shoho. Go to the brothel. A well-known brothel managed by a woman named Madam Vanity. Say the name. Madam Vanity. Good. Very good. You go there. You say these words. Are you listening? You say, if one of the orders of China requests sanctuary, one of the orders shall provide it. Madam Vanity will shelter you, protect you to the world. You'll appear to be one of her girls. No one will sink twice. And what type of life am I to have without you? One where you're free. One where you're safe. One where our child will live. Now go! So in other words, he sent her off as a... As a um, Political prisoner. Well, you know, he was a political prisoner and he sent her off so she could survive. That's mm. good explanation. All right. I see you're awake. Middle aged white guy. Too easy. Much too easy, apparently. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, something about this guy. Something familiar. I know you. Not well, but our crafts paths have crossed. Yeah, well, I don't want to alarm you or anything. But kidnapping is kind of a felony. I prefer you consider yourself our guest. Yeah, the chain just screams hospitality. Where'd you get the idea? Martha Stewart? <laughs> <laughs> it's made of reinforced titanium, in case you're wondering. Are you hungry? Let me demonstrate my hospitality. Given your thirst for blood, I have certain preparations made. Your chain will reach to her. Bon appetit. As we see him then getting captured and taken down... And place it under arrest. He then looks at this girl and he's starting to wonder, like, do, do I eat or die? Me or her? I see you haven't eaten yet. I'm not that kind of vampire. You'd be surprised what a man will do, what a man will become to save his life. You'd be surprised by a number of different ways I could think of to kill you. I very much doubt you'd murder your own father. That's right. There's a lot you don't know about your past, Eric. Generally speaking, I don't kill regular people, just vamps and demons. But this guy's lobbying pretty hard for me to make an exception. Your mother's name was Tara Croft. She was my wife. When she was pregnant with you, I sent her away for her own protection. She was sheltered in the brothel where you grew up. All right, fine, I'll play along. Then why vanity tell me she was one of her whores? For your own protection. If people learned you were my son, you'd become a, a target. Yeah, your concern for my welfare is overwhelming, Daddy. Why don't you unchain me so I can give you a hug? I'm sorry for this, truly. But as interested as you are in your past, Eric, I'm concerned with your future. Gee, that's sweet. Father knows best. There's a prophecy. 
an important prophecy, aren't they all? It speaks of you. You drink of virgin blood. I, I trust you now understand the purpose behind your being here. Sure, I understand. I've got a destiny. There's a prophecy, and you want me to vamp out on this little girl here because you're my daddy and you love me. Only problem, Dad, is I'm a heck of a lot older than I look. So unless you've been doing an awful lot of Botex, there's no way you could be my old way, man. Because, and plus, I'm pretty sure I'm not half white. I'm very sorry you don't believe me, Eric. But even if you don't, it doesn't change your two very limited options. Choose well, son. All right, there's only one way out of this. Her or me. No other way. Bon appetit. And we find out that it turns out he has a cancer or something. And when we find out he escaped. How? He bit his own hand off. And like, now free the girl and we'll be out of your hair. You'll never get out of this complex, especially with only one hand. Yeah, why don't you let me worry about that? Want to get out of here, sweetheart? Eric, you can't outrun your desktop. Go! Stay close to me and move fast. So he makes his way out of there, gets out of there, leaves the girl behind. And once I get the girl to safety, once I get well, I'm making this man my number one priority. I'm going to start with finding out the truth. I'm going to find everything there is to know about him. And we find out that, yeah, he got turned by a vampire so he can stay alive to see his wife and child again. So that explains why he's been long-lived, because he's a vampire. Hmm. Kind of makes it a little sympathetic, doesn't it? I said a little, not a lot. Mm. Oh, now here's an interesting idea. We're going to, again, back and forth, you know, then and now. Here, looking for answers. All the while, he then comes in and, um, how much of this? You got you guys take tra traveler's checks? Vampires don't kill, and bills don't kill vamps, obviously. Plenty of time for that, though. Yeah, this should do nicely. He then starts staking all of them. Like, and to think, I used to hate guys who wear necklaces. Like, stake some. Nothing seems to work at first. Like, stakes are the heart. This guy should be ash. So why isn't he? Ends up breaking it off. Let's try this again. Must have missed his heart that first time. But don't worry. I rarely make the same mistake twice. Actually, it's not that. Um, you're making a mistake. Why is it a mistake? There's plenty of vamps in London. And I can use all the help I can get. For one thing, you're asking the bloodshed to believe in vampires. No, I'm asking them to believe in me. And they do. Hell, they follow you all the way to England, but, but, but trusting you only goes so far. And you getting them to believe there are guys who can only be killed with the stakes of the heart, it's maybe trusting you a little too much. You believe me when I told you. I'm different. And I'm not just that. And it's not just that you're asking them to believe in vampires. You're asking them to help you fight them. No, I'm asking them to help me kill them. Turns out this guy here is a vampire. But you know the whole notion of you have a little bit of poison, you end up being immune to it? Hmm. This guy's doing something very similar. He's exposing himself ever a little bit to the stuff that usually would kill a vampire to strengthen his um, immunity to it. And obviously he's a priest. We then see um, he's dealing with a bunch of these other vampires. Okay, much like Bane said, admit it, you were right, boss, about the vampires. No, about killing them being fun. You were just yanking that vampire chain just then. Hmm? About you being immortal, can't be killed? No, I was just putting the fear and, and fear of God into him. And then we see uh, the the priest vampire shows up as he's making a using it a stump for of his arm for a um, for a, you know, a stake. And yeah, he's fighting this guy. This guy is really strong. Don't recognize this joker. But priestly investments aside, he's obviously capable of vamping out. Welcome to your end, damn fear. Okay then, showtime. No, again nothing happened. Just like before. Uh, and just like before. The hell's going on? My name's Draconis. I am to be your death. You're going to be my bitch, bitch. I've waited <laughs> decades. I'm just going to enjoy this. So yeah, this guy is tough. He's like one hell of a um, of a vampire. May please be like the states. Some things are just universal. Thank you, God. 
You endangered the humans, Dampier. You can save them by sacrificing yourself now. There's honor in that. No, not going out like this. I can smell your fear, Dampier. Time for you to make your peace with God. How? Before you do it, just tell me how. I staked you right in the chest. Mithrates, the great and king of Pontus, gave himself poison in small doses, which immunized him against larger amounts. Since being born a vampire, I've been exposed to the stake, the crucifix, holy water, sunlight, garnet, and garlic, and now, like in Mithridate, I am immune. Unlike you, ooh, he staked him. So you think he's dead, but turns out he ain't. Kill me, it's on the agenda. Kill me, but won't do you any good. You're a marked man, Eric Brooks. Oh yes, we know we know you. We know everything about you. Then you know how much trouble you're in. Yes, but I'll go to my final rest knowing that one day you'll do go to yours. Pre preparation is already underway. It'll take decades, but one day you'll meet a man whose bre president shall call Draconis, and he will be your death. Ooh. He then wakes up and he feels like I was dead. And then he realizes it was that um, necklace. Somehow, some way, it actually saves you from being killed. A vampire from being killed. Hmm. And now we go into the next one. I love that idea, don't you, of a vampire who actually makes himself immune? Yeah, that's right pretty scene? that's pretty clever. It is. So yeah, so this is me getting killed. Ha! Homage to the death of Electra. You know what I mean? Being stabbed and lifted? Yeah. Huh? Uh, and I, this is the guy who's, uh, and this is and the guy who did the killings named Draconis. He's a vampire who also happens to be a priest. Um, there was a time when he was just a kid, a boy, the kind of innocent who's susceptible to all sorts of promises, like power and immortality. All it cost him was his soul. One second. So, yeah, and then that's what he did. He basically did all the stuff to make him the most dangerous vampire ever. But even Cronus became more dangerous, building up his power by feasting on his own kind. So he would actually drink the blood of other vampires. Hmm. And so, yeah, he's then calling someone else to come help him out. Someone else who's actually helped, you know, done it before. And shut up and don't speak. Didn't I just finish telling you not to speak, didn't I? Fast learner, I like that. Hannibal King is the guy's name. He's the guy that um, Ryan Reynolds played in the third Blade movie. I don't think I saw the third one. Yeah. And um, turns out Blade actually bit him at one point. So you're telling what you're telling me here is you're half white. Try not to enjoy this too much. Too late. Glad I could brighten your day, Hannibal. You kidding? I've been depressed ever since my vampirism came back. So for a while now, it was is what you're saying. But this little revelation of yours sure cured me. I, uh, I, he, I, I mean, this is just about the funniest thing since that time I told some marshmallow and Ghost Rider's head. Wasn't too pleased about that. Those spirits of vengeance are pretty humorless. I, I love the fact I tell you there's a, a kind of super vamp operating in London that he killed me, that the only reason I'm still breathing is I lucked into this talisman that makes vamps immortal. And what gets your attention is the fact that some white guy claimed to be my dad. Sure, when you put it that way, I spent the last 24 hours questioning every vamp in London. I, I, word on the street is Draconis is throwing a little party celebrating killing me. Looks like the celebration's a bit premature. Looks like. So yeah, they make their way in. Um, they put up a good fight. Uh, hold on. And yeah, they start to take the whole place down, even causing a bit of a holy water. And oh, look at that! He had the priest right outside the water district. <laughs> 
That's actually kind of, that's actually kind of clever, right? <laughs> Here's a priest blessing the city water. That's fine. That, 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 that is clever. Oh. All right, again. So, yeah, and then, um, but he then puts up a good fight until he soon realizes the only way to do this is to, like, he even gets shot, taking his heart out by Hannibal, but he still gets up. And what is the only thing for him to do then is bite him. What's the thing, though, about, um, Moe's priests, though? They're virgins. Oh, so it happened regardless. So yeah, he then ripped his head off and everything for um for the same reason. I was drawn to the church in the first place. Eternal life. Here's your eternal life. Choke on it. So yeah, Mister Cross, it's Manning. Three o'clock in the morning. Yes, I know, sir, but you need to hear this now. I'm looking at the sib Sybil. No, sir, I'm staring right at it. And it's happening. Happen. Your son has fulfilled the next part of the prophecy. Which part? After his vampire urges stated upon drink and virgin essence. If I'm reading the Sybil correctly, a priest was involved. The details are sketchy, but the Sybil is omnipotent. Then it's happened. Once we locate the splinter, the prophecy will be fulfilled. So, yeah, we're starting to speed in towards the finale. Come on. <laughs> now, oh, yeah, now he's going to meet up with, um, um, oh, geez, I forget the guy's name, which, um, oh, I'll get his name in a moment, but he's in the UK. Now, and, um, the Union Jack, Union Jack. Uh. Who also is a vampire hunter. So, yeah, he soon meets up with the woman who was his uh, adopted mother. Sweet, sweet how you've always called me, Mom. You're my mother. Me even more than the one who birthed me. Your mother is so much you don't know about her. I know everything I need to. Oh, no, uh, no, you don't. I was supposed to tell you when, uh, and tell you when you, when I was what? When you needed to know. But you haven't needed to. And for that, I'm glad. But soon I'll be gone without you ever having had the chance to tell you. Tell me what? The secret's buried with your mother. Mom. But now she thinks like, I, n I never really saw much about what Vandy said that night. Figured, sure, my mom had secrets whose parents doesn't. But then some white guy shows up claiming to be my father, telling me I've got some um, role to play in a prophecy. Suddenly I'm wondering if Vandy didn't mean things a little more literally than I saw it. Um, but yeah, soon he, um, yeah, finds it, digs it up, sees her, um, yeah, it stinks of decay. And I'm pretty sure it was clutched in her hand, which have long since been turned to bone. Something tells me I shouldn't read it. Not because I don't want to learn what's written on the parchment, but because it feels like I'd be violating her privacy somehow. And I would be. But I'm sorry, Mom, I just gotta know. And basically, she confirms everything. You know about you know about her um, her husband um, Lucas Cross and all that, and basically makes it clear. Yeah, the Order of Trina. Not the first time I've heard of it. In fact, I'm pretty sure I was a part of it. Kind of. Years ago, when I was on the run from the law, Vandy sa said a member of the Order would shelter me, but he died before revealing the Order's secrets. Fortunately, I've got some new friends who stocks in trades and secrets. Calls up Shield and tries to find out about it all. Um. And basically, it is now after Civil War. I just need some information. 20 seconds of your database. 10 seconds. The Order of Tyrina, 1R1N, and no joy. There is a, lo a lock on the file. Director at only access. Don't you have, th have that as a former director? No, hence the former. But the files cross reference with a group of the Knights of Pendragon, Pendragon probably because they split off from, the Tyr from Tyrina at some point. 
convenient for you. You're in London, right? The Knights are based out of there. So, yeah, this is where we meet up with Union Jack and everything. Mr. British Flag fancies himself a bounty, a vampire hunter. That's either coincidence or irony. So, Union Jack jumps in on Hannibal. And I, I could explain this, but there's only two problems with that which I can see. The first being, I like shooting vampires. Silver bullets, by the way, not cheap to come by. Second, I pretty much know all the explanations for vampirism. Uh, like, yeah, but, damn it, Blade! <laughs> Where the hell are you? Um, I, I, I look at this. Look what he got from Shield to put on his stump. A gun arm. Hmm. You haven't heard of Blade? You've, you've heard of Blade, haven't you? Why, he a friend of yours? It's a little more complicated than that, actually. Doesn't matter. I've never heard of the guy. Really? Because that just hurts my feelings. But I take back all the nasty things I've ever said about S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, maybe not the part about their silly skin-tight uniforms. Whatever else they uh, they, um, they may be, the guys in their tech division are off the hook. Somehow this gun's light as a feather and it responds to different muscle twitches. But So I can not only fire, but I can switch between the uh, three different kinds of ammo. This thing's got, like the rubber bullets I'm firing here. But of course, rubber bullets. I want Union Jack here down, but I don't want him out. After all, you can't interrogate a dead man. And believe me, in my line of work, I've tried. Burp. What the hell are you doing? Ooh, right through his shoulder to save him. And yeah, he basically like, listen, I just saved your life. No need to save me, but you got to figure I need. I, I did that for a reason. I need you to know everything you do about the Order of Tyranna. How about it? Vampires who hunt vampires. What the hell is this world coming to? Yeah, I've been asking myself the very same question. That doesn't really sound like you shutting up. What business do you have with the order? No business of yours. Let's just say I've decided to do the world a favor and take them out. And how is that doing anybody a favor? Come again? The order is, how do I put this? They're good guys. It's a quaint term, I know, but it's true. My group, the Knights of Pendragon, spun from the order a decade ago. But we still keep in touch. Trade resources and intel, that kind of thing. And when you say good guys, you mean guys who are good. The order to help catch the Pope's would-be assassin in 81, bring the Berlin, down, down, Berlin Wall down in 89, and melt of his regime in 2000. The order is doing relief work right now in, in Darfur, establishing democracy in Saudi Arabia, fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan. You look surprised. What? You thought they were the bad guys? Nice twist. So again, you're wondering, wait, they're not the bad guys? Now this, this is during when Spidey was back in black. During GM, near the end of GMS's run. Mm -hmm. so again, we're still getting more with him as he's um, in the past catching up. We then see him um, like Lucas Cross. I was told he's here tonight. The event is invitation only and black, black tie only, sir. This is my invitation and my tux is at the cleaners. The Belmont room, upstairs, second door on your left. Ha! Hmm. Once you see him, maybe we should speak outside. Why? My being here embarrasses you or something? Eric, this is a social um, club of DC's politicians. Unexpected reunions with offsprings are a common occurrence. Except in my case, I'm not your bastard son, am I? So you're finally believing me about being my son. I had an edu educational trip to the family plot in England. There's just one thing that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Look, I can give and look as I do, given how old I must be. You're a smart man, Eric. I would have thought you'd have figured it out but yourself. Like father, like son. Okay, it's not that I don't see that um, patricide is a perfectly valid choice in this situation, but I must remind you that DC has the highest murder rate in the country. So their homicide investigations are quite good. To say nothing of the 30 or so very distinguished and commanding eyewitnesses less than six feet away. I think you being a vampire should simplify my legal case a little. Point. If you kill me, you won't get your answers. And that's the real reason for this father-son reunion, isn't it? My problem it, my problem in a nutshell is you're an evil perp, but you're, and you're set. The Order of Tyranna isn't. So which one am I wrong about? Me. 
yeah, some I thought you'd say that, and some I thought you'd be the tougher option to swallow. It doesn't make it any less true. Except for the fact you're a friggin' vampire. Except for the fact you chained me up. Except for the fact you did it to get me to feast on a helpless little girl. I became a vampire because it was the only way to be with your, you and your mother again. And the girl, I thought I was helping the prophecy along. The prophecy of a way of coming true on their own. Draconis the priest. How about that? And what's this prophecy all about? What outcome are you trying to help along? If I told you, well, let's just say I doubt I could uh, can I count on your help. help and, bring me, and bring me right back to the whole evil part. Things are complex, Eric, and not everything is as it seems. So that leaves you with two choices. Kill your own father and hope your instincts about me are right, or give yourself over to destiny. I'll tell destiny this. Destiny can get bent. So, yeah, they basically find a bit more about him being, you know, um, he gives them a copy of the, you got a copy of the prophecy. A father, you know, he, he realizes it. I freed him before I was born, just like the prophecy said. I freed my father. Yeah, so why is the earth all salty? I don't know, but if we're going to stop this prophecy from coming true, we, we got to get our hands on Vlad's remain. Um, excuse me, but we? Yeah, we, for all, and for three real good reasons. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. First, you're from La Crosse, Kansas. Second, you owe me for not staking your vampire ass all the, these years. Third, I'm the only friend you've got. Since when are we friends? That's a good point. Forget that third part. <laughs> but yeah, they took around the helicarrier um, crash site and everything, and they're trying to find it all. Eventually, then he meets up with Spidey. We see this weird guy, um, Fracture. And... Um, yeah, he's webbing them all up, and eventually um, we hear a, you heard the man, back off. Oh, we're seeing a bit of that. Him finding his way through stuff. Butter, 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 butter. Hey, Spidey, how are the kneecaps? What the hell did you just do? Are you insane? No, tranquilizer darts. I'm a vampire slayer, not the punisher, but thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> I need to talk to you about what happened a few months ago back. The elementary school. He shot me in the knee, both knees. Yes, I know. I was there. And you're apologizing now? No, I'm not. You were a vampire and shooting you in the knees was a favor. Now, can you? I talk to you about what you, and, and what I came here to talk to you about? Like an apology would kill you? The elementary school. Yeah, I saw this guy, suspicious looking, going into the school. He was the one in the green and black cloak. Yeah, like I, sa I said, suspicious. I don't like it when suspicious guys in spooky cloaks, no less, go into a school's. Me neither, except in this case, I was hunting Dracula. Yeah, Cloakie and him seemed to be pretty chummy with each other. I found him in the basement. They were digging around for something, some amulet, Drax said. What is it with your bad guys anyway? They're always after some ancient something or another. Why are you and yours always robbing banks? That's a good point. But anyway, they fight all, anyway, they fight him up and, well, eventually, I, and but Cloakie got position on me and, and I bet and bit you in the neck. Yeah, he actually got him. He was a vampire. Sure, I know that now. At least I did when I turned your friendly neighborhood spider vamp. Think I went a little crazy. So eventually that's what led to their fight there and everything. And yeah, he talks about that and the agents. My point is, you sound an awful lot like the only guy who got to go look at Cloakie's face. I was, and I did. But if you're looking for him, I can do you one better than a description. Your pal Dracula referred to him by name. And it's Jamal. That was the guy who had trained him before. And turns out he got turned into a vampire and he had to kill him by doing a cross. But yeah, his name was Jamal Af Afari. Why? You know him? And now into issue 11 as we're coming in closer to the end game and find out what all this prophecy is about. Funny thing, that night, a bunch of guys showed up pointing guns at me at 3 in the morning. Some things never change. Aw, daddy's home. That wit, you get it from your mother. Along with my skin tone, apparently. We need to talk. Yeah, that'll explain all the automatic weapons. These men are here because your cooperation isn't reliable. Through that... But you're going to want to hear what I have to say. Somehow I'm doubting it. For the past three weeks, you've been all over the world, searching for your former mentor, Jamal Afari. A search that is remarkable insofar as you killed him decades ago. 
Gee, I just knew there was a reason why I couldn't find him. You don't want to parry with me, Eric. I know a lot more than I, you think I do. I know that you killed him after Drakkar turned him into a vampire. I know despite the fact he was spotted in a New York City elementary school 11 months ago. I know you've been searching for him ever since you learned that. But most importantly, I know where he is. Three weeks ago, as he's trying to find out, you know, he's following through on everything. Florence, Berlin, Prague, looking for Dracula. And no. And where is he? And where, where is he gets interesting? So, yeah, he's trying to find Afari, turned by Dracula, and apparently resurrected. He is still shade. Most likely, I should have anticipated Dracula's involvement in all this. Perhaps we could turn it to our advantage. So, we see, back then when he's leaving, he's just packing everything up. He's, um, leave, uh, he'll be starting his home in Transylvania soon. So, he starts taking some of Jamal's souvenirs with him. Nice plane. These leather seats see um, genuine human skin. I don't know why you insisted on bringing along this acquaintance, son. Two reasons. First, I don't trust you. And second, I don't trust you. <laughs> Where are we headed? Transylvania. That was the first place I looked for Afari. He wasn't there. He will be. You, you sure are certain about a whole me mess of things. That's the beauty of a prophecy. You have destiny to guide you. And this is a knife for destiny. You have my word. I'll make sure you're reunited with your former mentor. And I'll give you the means to restore his soul. What's the catch? Why must you assume my every intention is mal mal malevolent? You're one of the bad guys. Why make that assumption? You're a vampire for one thing. So is your friend here. We're not friends! And you, Eric, are a vampire yourself. After a fashion, you have fangs, a thirst for blood. And despite your immunity to the weakness of vampires, you have no soul. And we see them back then. This is when he starts to get the afro a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but he, this is when he meets up a bunch of friends. Uh, friends of him. Ugan, Azu, Masende, and Orish, vampire hunters, with experience that almost matches mine. So, yeah, they're going to start to work together. Dracula's no longer in his castle, you know. Of course I do. But no matter what's been and what becomes of the land. No matter what structure they built upon it, it's still sacred ground. Salted earth. Salted nut what now? Years ago. Years ago, Dracula salted the ground beneath his castle as protection against certain magics. Okay, but I've heard that phrase, salted earth, somewhere before. Yes, from the prophecy Daddy is so obsessed with. A father in chains freed by his son, not yet birth, will unlock Vlad's remain upon the salted earth. I took it off your computer. You might be two steps ahead of me, Dad, but I'm three steps ahead of you. Here, uh, We're here, Mr. Cross. We're here. Dracula's castle. At least it used to be. Ha! It's made into a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. This property doesn't turn out well for me, as I recall. Returning essence lost from those undead in graves and immortal living cost to the man known as Blade. Now, I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound a whole lot like a fun for me. A few years, weeks ago, you picked up a talisman and an amulet, maybe. It renders you immune from death, immortal. Destroy it at the site, and that part of the prophecy is fulfilled. It's but a small price to pay for what you receive in return, what we all receive. Ooh, you got me in pins and needles now. Your soul, Eric, you'll get back to your soul. Returning as is lost from those undead in graves. Holy furp! I willingly became a vampire because it was the only way to see you and your mother. But from the moment I made that Faustian bargain, I searched for a loophole in it, a way to restore my soul. And I found it. I found it for all of us. And by us, you mean the vampire, vampire, vampires, as I said, all of us. One sacrifice on your part, Eric, and you restore, and restore all of our souls. It's your destiny. It's what the prophecy foretold. Here we are on salted earth. Here you are, the son who freed me, carrying the ammo that gives you immortal living. And here are Vlad's remain, which was found from the stake of his um, when he was stabbed. Take it, open the vial, and stick it in the ground. Destroy the ammo, and give us all the only things that make our lives worth living. No. And basically, then we're seeing, you know, him. Getting, they're getting ready to go and attack the, uh, Dracula. Screw the ammo. I could care less about losing it. I'll be damned, literally damned, if I'm going to make vampires invulnerable. 
Because unfortunately, because of their lack of souls that make them weak to all those weaknesses. If they got their souls back, like you weren't there when it happened, Dad. But trust me, I wasn't born yesterday. I don't care about the invulnerability, Eric. I never have. All I care about, all I ever wanted was to restore my soul. Life's full of disappointed. I became this thing for you, for your mother. You won't make good on that debt? No, not this way. Fine. If you won't do it for your biological father, maybe you'll do it for your adoptive one. Manning! Jamal! Good, as good as my word. I told you you'd be reunited, reunited with your mentor, but God is my witness. I'll have him stake before you can take another step. Hannibal? No, Blade. We can take him. No, we can't. Yeah, the two are going to start fighting it out now because he wants his soul back too. So the two fight it out and he stabs and kills Hannibal. Holy perp. Bet you always wanted to do that. Okay, who's next? As we go into the grand finale. Nobody loves me. Don't they realize? I'll be back, baby. Goodbye, world. Canceled. So, yeah, he puts up a good fight, and then Dracula shows up. Never let it be said, Count Dracula does not possess an appreciation for the ironic. Harming my son isn't part of our agreement, Count. On my land, I define what's permissible, Cross. Besides, the blade missed all the vital organs. Isn't that so, Mr. Brooks? It turns out I wasn't the only one interested in the prophecy. Vlad here has been working on it for centuries. But he couldn't do anything without this. Right, Cross? So Dracula is reanimated using a spell known as the Espel Shade. It permits me to resurrect those I've turned to vampire. Or in it was an enhanced degree of pliability. But not in Jamal's case. He suckered you. Got you as far as from London as possible. Claiming to be under and buried under a school was a master stroke. Who in his right mind would send me there? Who indeed? So, yeah. Thanks for the sword back. A word to the wise, Dampier. We fought countless times over the decades. Do you truly believe I wouldn't recognize your tactics? They're as familiar to me as the taste of blood. Isn't this a familiar situation? As I said, I have an irony fetish. Does this strike a familiar chord with you, Eric? As we see a flashback with something similar. As all the others fought him back years ago, but they all soon die. They, they, all, they, they all get killed off. You will, I, you will if you value your neck. I think I might be overestimating how much I do there, uh, how much I do there, Drac. Don't you want a soul, Eric? Don't you want to be truly human? You think Count Chalk and Chocula here does? Think, Dad. What's in it for him? Don't tell me it's a soul. I know the kind of furp he was before he went vampire. And believe me, he could give a flying furp about having a soul. So you got to ask yourself, what's this process, prophecy got in for him? Smash the vial on the ground and find out, Daywalker. You gonna tear him out my throat or what? Cause I haven't got all night. Not gonna do it, are you? I died as nobody else to fulfill your prop little prophecy. True that. And sure enough, the splinter falls. And it touches the earth. You did it. Why don't I feel different? That's cause you're still the same soul as Ferp you were before that stick of ground hit and dirt hit the ground. Game over, Dad. You lost. I don't understand. Something, ha nothing happened. Something should have happened. Yeah, I think, I think something did. Hannibal's back up. Holy, how is it on stilts, Hannibal? Blade? Oh, that's for killing me. Now, who can tell me what the perp just happened? The prophecy, of course. My God, don't think he has much to do with this, actually. How could I have been so wrong? Returning essence lost from those undead and grave. Essence not being one's soul, but one's life. You knew? Of course. You know what this means, right? It means every vampire ever killed, every vampire who ever died, comes back. Every last godforsaken cursed one of them. Nice going, Dad. Eric, my God. I, I'm so sorry. Sorry? You're sorry? I don't think this is the kind of situation an apology can, can cover. Two against one. And Vlad, three if you can count Jamal here. I believe this would be a good time to hold you on you to our bargain. I thought you might say that. Turns out long ago, he fought the others, they died, and then he left them there. Knowing that one day they'd be in a similar situation, and he would honor that 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 that, that, that. jerk. No argument there. He's talking about you. Yeah, I figured. I'm going to go look for some pants. You 
You're not going to kill me? The thought has crossed my mind. But something tells me that living with all of this would be worse than the hell I know is waiting for you. So he decided to make up the Hannibal and give him the um, the cure that Doom had given him. Why? Because he still wants to keep his bloodlust. But he knows he owes it to Hannibal, at least. And then we see him deciding to take all the different things from his uh, mentors. Every one of them. And this is where we get Gene Colan's artwork. Ogun's wristband, Mazunda's boots, Azu's belt, Orish wooden daggers, and to complete the look, something from Jamal, the Shades. Five men, five teachers. I carry them with me forever. So that's the end. What did you think? That was nice. I like that one. That was a good story. Yep. I mean, you feel bad for his dad, but at the same time, he's a son of a bitch. Yeah. I mean, the thing, because he, he fucked up royally. I mean, he had good reasons, but he fucked up royally. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, wow, right? Mm hmm. So, what would you rate that one? Story and artwork. Okay, story is like uh, probably nine. eight or nine. Eight or nine, probably yeah. Eight or, eight or nine. Now, They're in order to get a 10. Gene Colan's artwork at the end, those last two pages. That was great. I mean, that was like, you know, that was art. That was art. Perfect art for those yeah, two pages. That was so, art. So what about Chaykin's artwork? Hmm? It got better near the end, if you ask me. It did get a bit better near the end. Yeah, I'll give you that. It did get a bit better, but it, it still looked pretty rough. It was rough, but not shit. I would say that. It's like he has good storytelling. There's no argument there. He has mm -hmm. very good storytelling. But it's just like, what kind of artwork is that? So, yeah. And that, and that I still consider, that is still a, a, a personal favorite of mine when it comes to Blade, because it's a good story overall. Yeah. Leaves on a really big cliffhanger. They're like, oh, crap, all the vampires are back and they don't do much with it. Mm. Now, eventually, um, Blade would get a prosthetic hand eventually, but I love that gun hand. Mm -hmm. And they have not retconned it, because I think because Guggenheim made it so definitive that that was his father. There's really no way you can undo it. And I thought Lucas Cross was an interesting... He wasn't... You can't call him a bad guy, per se, could you? Well... He is the antagonist, that much is certain, but... His yeah. reasons made sense in many ways. He just wanted his soul back. He just didn't realize the point of the prophecy. He said, you would think knowing that Dracula wanted to be involved should have been, the like Blade said, that's the, t the big red flag. Mm -hmm. But he was so blinded by his wanting of his soul that he didn't care. So, and he was easily fooled. He was. Yeah, he got I mean, bullied. when you look at that prophecy... You can't help him for make, making that misunderstanding, though, can you? Well, maybe. The essence, but the like, essence of that which lost, you wouldn't think it'd be that coming back from the dead. Yeah, but like, I mean, it still doesn't make him less of an idiot. Oh no, definitely. I think that's the thing. He's more of an idiot than he is evil. Well, I mean, he's not exactly the greatest guy in the world either. But you know, he has no soul. You gotta remember that he has no soul. No, but... I would say, though, my favorite part of this all was the Draconis stuff. I think that was the best part. Can you say that again? Was... The Draconis stuff, the priest? Oh, uh, yeah. That was the best part, I think. Mm. What would you say was your favorite part of it? Mm. I think it was more toward the end. It was, like, you know, all that stuff more toward the end when we started getting back into... We're uh, not back, but, like, when we started getting into Endgame, I think... Uh, that too. About when he fought Union Jack on, yeah. I think that's about when it started to get really good for me. Yeah, it did. It's, I mean, Grant, the flashback stuff didn't matter much anymore. It was kind of marking time getting to that point. Because yeah. yeah, that flashback stuff, that rushed. That's so rushed at the end, didn't it? The mm. flashback portion. Yeah. But, yeah. So, yeah, that was Blade. Thanks so much for joining, Dan. And of we'll course. see you all on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.